All right. Hello, friends. So today we started with our uh, uh, big O training and notation stuff. I made the first video on that. Now, in the first video, if you're following along in the playlist, um, if you're coming to this video and you're not following along with the playlist, I would suggest following along with it uh, because each video kind of uh, builds off the next. So in our previous video, we had discussed uh, we had just, we'd started discussing big O notation and we went over two types. We went over linear and we went over constant and we discussed what those were. So um, right now we're going to do a little exercise to try to calculate up and I'll show you how to simplify uh, when you calculate big O. So let's look at this first example from line 3 to line 13. So we have just a function called test and it takes in an input. We're not sure what the input is. Uh, judging from down here, it looks like it would be some kind of array. Well, maybe it was a string that was passed in. We split it to an array. doesn't matter. This is all just made up code. It doesn't mean anything. What we're doing here is trying to figure out how to calculate big O and then simplify it. So let's just go through line by line and see what we would do here. So this assignment that takes place on line four right here. Now that's an assignment and it's, it counts as one. So the complexity and the way that you would denote this would just be big O of one because it's a constant it's a constant uh, time that it would take it is not dependent upon the input you, we just we just declare result and assign it to an empty array one time same way with this right here this happens one time we just set we assign a value sorted to true and that takes one it's 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 constant it's not linear because it's not dependent on the input. Now input.split right here, we're assigning this input to input.split. Again, that would be big O of one. And I'm just gonna copy this, I'm gonna use it a bunch. Okay, so copy that. Now we get down here, we have a loop right here. So this loop, is it dependent on the size of the input right here? Yes, it is, it is dependent on that. So this action, it's going to run as at, it'll run linearly with the amount it will grow, the amount of times that it will run will grow with the amount of input that is in the size of the input. So this operation would be big O of n. And let me actually copy that too, or copy that one. So that would be big O of n. Then within the loop, since we're we're assigning a current variable every time here, is that is the amount of times that we declare well we shouldn't be declaring this here but it doesn't matter it's just it's just spaghetti code but let's say that we were doing that we would have to actually put let current be up here if we wanted to keep it right and that would be big O of one none of this code means anything it's just we're showing it um, but this step on line nine would would be dependent on the size of the input so this would be big O of n then uh, same way this would be big O of n because this push right here is dependent on the size of the input. And this result down here, it only runs once, so this would be big O of one, right? So, not that, there we go. Okay, so now let's calculate this up. So we have big O of one, big O of one, big O of one, big O of one, big O of one. So we have one, two, three, four, five. So if we were gonna write this out, we would write it like big O of five, because there are five operations in it, and then O of N, O of N, O of N. So five plus three N, right? Now, you're never gonna have to do this because this is not how you would write this. The way that you would write this would be, it would literally just simplify to big O of N. Why is that? Because there are a couple of rules that in a, in a couple of conventions when you're work conventions when you're working with big O, one of them is that you can drop constants. So if we're doing like two plus three n right here, the two and the three they don't really in the grand scheme of things as you ex extrapolate out and you try to scale this function, the two and the three are fairly useless. What you're really interested in is the n because that is what's directed toward the input. So the n is the defining factor of this entire function. A good rule of thumb is whenever you see a for loop, 
and not a nested for loop, but just a for loop that runs, that in worst case scenario would have to run through the entirety of the array, then you then that would be a big O of n. Uh, like this would just be big O of n. Instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 plus 3 n, it would just be n. Now, let's look at this one. It's kind of the same way. So this, outside of the loop, this would be big O of 1 because it's a constant. It's just It's just happening one time. Then here, whoops, here, same way. Here, set a variable, we're assigning it, same way. Here, setting another variable, assigning it. Here, setting another variable, assigning it. Then we have our loop. Within our loop, again, it is dependent on the size of the input is how many times this is gonna run. So this would be big O of n, copy that. Then if we look at this other function call, now we don't know what this other function does, but we do know how many times we call it. We call it n times. The length of the array times is how many times that we call that. So that would be a big O of n operation. Setting this variable to false would be another big O of n operation. Increasing test case, another one. Decreasing second case, another one. The returning would be big O of one. Why does it put object there? Big O of one little o of one, can't type. Okay, so now in the same way, we would add all these up. So it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, six o of ones, and then one, two, three, four, five o of ends. So technically it would be big o, <laughs> big o of six plus five n, which as we learned earlier, this six plus five really doesn't make a difference in the grand scheme of things as we scale this out the main thing that we're concerned with is the n so it would just calculate to o of n now you're like well there's so many o of ones here and there's only a couple of o of n's here why wouldn't it be just o of one again remember if you just have a function here just another function called test and it doesn't take an input and it just returns true this is an o of one a constant because it is not dependent on let's just say that we've passed in an input it is not dependent on the input that's passed in. It runs one, one line of code one time at a constant time. So that's how you simplify between constant and linear time. There are other things that come up as we keep moving forward. So just keep going in the playlist and we'll get some more and more confusing. These first couple of videos are kind of like boring and kind of intuitive, but as it gets steps up a little bit in complexity, you'll start to see why it's very important to know this stuff. All right, take it easy.